I literally uh, uh, want to want to break out in tears. Uh, it's uh, it is it really is when I say exhausting, I mean just emotionally drenching. Uh, 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 the way that uh, the emotions run the gamut, and so yeah, on a very personal level, uh, I think there are times when I. Uh, I uh, go home and I reach out to my family and my friends because I need that support. I think uh, speaking to many of the people that are on here right now are people of faith. And I know that um, uh, I, I don't like to put my faith into a neat little box, but I rely very, very much on my own personal spirituality uh, to, uh, to get me through uh, this. It is, it is. And, and thank you for asking this because this is really the first time uh, I've gotten real personal with uh, with folks is that it is it is incredibly trying uh, and I can see it not just in me, but also in my staff uh, that they are really putting themselves out there it is uh, it, it is uh, absolutely amazing work I always tell people I have the best job in town uh, right now I feel like it is probably the most trying job around probably not I mean if you're a, a doctor uh, seeing COVID patients on a regular basis. I'm sure that's even more trying. But uh, the fact that I have to go down and see my volunteers uh, in masks, uh, see people that are incredibly vulnerable. Our homeless population is incredibly vulnerable uh, to this. And, and that is very uh, gut-wrenching. Uh, uh, so I think I'm probably going to be dealing with this more uh, afterwards. Uh, and I think that it's once the smoke starts to clear is when I'm probably going to need to go uh, hike out into the desert and commune with uh, with uh, God out in the desert to 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 deal with all of this. But but uh, I do think that uh, it's uh, it's incredibly trying. But there's also ways in which it is just incredible when you're able to turn somersaults and make something happen. Uh, you just go, yes, we were able to do that. And if we can get the food, the senior nutrition program for seniors up and running and delivering seniors food out that way, um, I'll definitely earn my cocktail on Friday night. <laughs> yeah, you, already, you already earned it in my mind. I, I would love to ask you just a couple questions about some of the specific programs that CSA is running. Mm -hmm. um, and then maybe you can just tell us about the status of those and before. And then of course, if there's any questions, people can put them in the chat. Um, tell me about the, I know that the CSA is a food pantry. Um, mm -hmm. Is that still open? And what's happened with people in emergency need of food? Yeah, uh, we do actually have the food pantry open, although it, it is not a food pantry. Once we've heard, uh, and this happened actually in late, February, the CDC said it's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when uh, this was going to turn bad. Uh, we immediately went into planning mode and we realized that if we're dealing with something that's a virus, we can't have people in close quarters coming inside of our building uh, for our pantry services. So we decided uh, at that point to immediately go to pre-bagged uh, bags of groceries. You're still going to get uh, uh, good food from our pantry, but we're going to box it up or bag it up for you, including fresh produce. And uh, all of that distribution happens outside in the parking lot. Uh, so every people can come in and they can actually uh, get the uh, food uh, from us and in that way. That protects our staff, it, it protects our volunteers, and it, it protects our uh, 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 it protects our clients. Have you seen an increase in people needing food or is it about the yes. same? Yeah, uh, usually if someone comes and they need to register for food, we send them inside to the lobby, they get registered and they come out and that happens every once in a while. Uh, right now we're looking at somewhere around 10% uh, of our uh, folks that are showing up have never been to CSA before. Uh, and we are, you know, anyone who comes and shows up gets food. Uh, we will we will feed whoever shows up. I I need to be careful about that because if suddenly we are inundated and run out, that that could be an issue. But right now, anyone who comes, you don't have to be registered or anything, and you will be get food. And this all goes back to the just get it done, and we'll mop up later and get them registered later. The other food program that we have is our hot lunch program that happens every day at the uh, 
uh, Mountain View Senior Center. Yeah, I was going to ask about that. Yeah, uh, and uh, uh, we uh, we we do have a uh, 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 that hot lunch program has been put on hold because the senior center is closed, but it looks like we're going to uh, uh, get that senior center opened up uh, and uh, we'll be actually uh, 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 running food out of that. And what about some of the homeless populations that you work with? I'm thinking people that are street homeless, but also I know people that are living multiple people per unit or potentially some of RVs or right. habitation. Right. People, tend to, people in general tend to have one idea of what is a homeless individual and may think that homeless individuals are, um, uh, uh, you know, just have a backpack on their back and are sleeping on the streets. But homelessness runs the gamut. It can be someone who's couch surfing, someone who's temporarily sleeping in a garage. We had one guy that was uh, paying someone money to sleep in his bathtub at one point. Uh, uh, people who live in RVs are considered homeless. Those are homeless individuals. Uh, and so uh, I think that uh, it's, uh, it's one of those things that uh, uh, it, it's not one specific type of person. But the people who are the most at risk uh, are those that are sleeping rough uh, out, in, out in nature or sleeping in co close contact with other people. One of the issues that we've had to deal with uh, recently, too, on the homeless population is because the shelters had to move to more social distancing between beds, uh, that uh, the shelter capacity went down, uh, which meant that more and more people were not able to get into the shelter when they, when they needed to. Uh, but my understanding is that they have changed uh, some of the criteria. My staff are a little more uh, 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 in the know on this and that they are trying to accommodate as many people as they possibly can. Uh, but that, that would be safer than sleeping on the streets if someone can get into a shelter. Yeah, thanks for sharing some of those things. I, you know, when you were talking, I was specifically thinking, you know, so much about the senior lunch program that was shut down. You know, I realize that's both the food is a, an important component of that, but there's also the social component. If anyone's ever been um, to, you know, when the, every um, CSA staff member and every CSA board member goes and has lunch there um, before they're part of CSA. And I was just, you know, thinking about um, the social network that's going, um, you know, that's so much part of this relationship. And as we think about it from a synagogue lens that we know that, you know, it's really people that make up part of our community. And certainly um, the line that we've been using is we don't want to make, we want to make sure that social distancing isn't social isolation. Um, have you been thinking about that? Um, and if they, I know you're trying to put out fires and responding to people's real concerns over, you know, food, shelter, water, but um, has that been part of it? Yes, absolutely. Uh, and in fact, I think that with the senior population, that's particularly important. Uh, isolation happens, and actually isolation can happen at all levels. And so when people who uh, uh, maybe can't come down and actually volunteer handing out food to folks uh, ask, well, what can I do? If you have a senior neighbor, check in on them. Absolutely. Uh, I think that uh, that that is critically important because seniors do get isolated. They, they, they uh, uh, sometimes feel very separated from the world that's around them. And so one of the key things that's really important about our senior lunch program is that it's not just about lunch. It really is about getting seniors together and uh, putting them in a room where they can socialize and be around one another. One of the things, this really came about 20 years ago when I was brand new at CSA. This came through loud and clear. I don't know if you remember on the morning of September the 11th, we really didn't know what was going on at that point. There were a lot more questions than answers. And that was a Tuesday morning, uh, and I called the CSA staff together, and I said, no one goes into a government building today. You know, we go about our work the way that we go about our work, but no one goes into a government building today. But I took the time that day to go out and visit all of our CSA programs. And on a Tuesday, that's generally one of the lower census days, always has been at our, uh, at our senior lunch program. I went in that, that day, and the lunch program was packed it was at capacity. And it was at capacity primarily because uh, uh, people needed to be together. 
And I think especially when you're a senior and you're living alone or your family's far away, uh, that, that becomes uh, very important. Uh, we also do a lot of other things around there that aren't getting done right now, and things like blood pressure checks, uh, bingo games, <laughs> all kinds of stuff that just uh, aren't getting done. And that's because of uh, uh, you know, the social isolation, and that's, that's actually a really important issue. If you ask anyone who knows about gerontology, uh, they'll tell you that isolation and depression that goes along with isolation are big issues for seniors. Yeah. Um, Tom, can I ask you a question about, um, and then if people have questions, we'll open it up and certainly put them in the chat. Um, listen, we all know this isn't a surprise to anyone that housing is housing, housing, housing in this area at all times um, in Mountain View, um, in Los Altos, in Los Altos Hills. Um, this is the major issue for everyone all the time. Um, and I know that CSA has been working with people and people who are homeless and people in need of housing, and there's just a total lack of housing at all the times. Um, I've been following some of the conversations around um, evictions and renter rights um, up and down the peninsula. And I know that CSA is not a political organization. Um, and one of the reasons that it's successful is that it really works as a community safety net, um, not working with policy. Um, I see Dan Rich on the call, our former city manager of Mountain View, and I, I see Rose on the CSA board. I know there's other people here as well. Um, but I'm interested in hearing your thoughts or um, your personal thoughts on some of the ways that um, government can play a role in protecting the most vulnerable at this time. Sure, and, and uh, you're right uh, uh, that we, we uh, uh, don't get political, and that's for a reason. Uh, we, we are a service organization, and that, you know, our job is to get the job done. Uh, and we feel that if, uh, if we get overly political, uh, that that can alienate people. And, and quite frankly, if I look, for example, at all seven of the members of the Mountain View City Council uh, are supportive of CSA. We, we want it to be that way. I will tell you this, during this time of the COVID crisis, the virus crisis, or whatever we're gonna end up calling this, we have gotten political about one thing. Uh, and we have actually sent letters to uh, uh, city council on this, and that is around eviction moratorium. Uh, and that uh, we have said that we are in favor of an eviction moratorium. And the reason why is uh, beyond the fact that uh, it's helpful to renters during this time and especially service sector folks during this time. It's also helpful to CSA because I will tell you in the last week, we have get been inundated with phone calls around rental assistance. And it's primarily because uh, we, are, um, uh, uh, we are dealing with the people in the service sector people who are losing their jobs, be it, you know, their service uh, jobs, their wait staff jobs, uh, uh, their delivery jobs, or whatever the case may be. These are the folks that are really being adversely affected by shelter in place. Uh, you know, my husband who works in tech is sitting at home and he's working his regular 12, 14 hour day. Uh, but uh, uh, we, uh, we know that, uh, 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 you know, people like that are still gonna get a paycheck. He's not laid off. Uh, but the person whose job is to wait tables or the person whose job is to be a server at, for the uh, caterer, they are getting laid off. And on a normal month, CSA does about 20 rental assistance uh, services. Uh, on Monday alone, we had 34 calls from people who are laid off and looking for rental assistance. So uh, it is... Uh, uh, it, it is one of those crazy things. Now, I will say this, that uh, uh, I, I think I, it was Ida Rose that just put up there that uh, uh, the county was contemplating doing a countywide moratorium. Uh, and there's been all kinds of support for uh, the ability to enact moratoria, I guess you would say moratoria, uh, from, uh, the count, from the state, from the feds and so forth. Uh, but uh, from a purely survival point of view, CSA is not going to not going to be able to meet capacity uh, if uh, if we are going to uh, have uh, this kind of inundation of people needing rental assistance. There's yeah. no question about it. 
Tom, you know how I feel about this on a personal level. So, um, mm -hmm. you know, but I do think that, you know, sometimes that government turns to um, organizations like CSA as a way to abdicate themselves of their own responsibility. Um, and you don't have to comment on this. And but sometimes I do think that um, we certainly need government to look out for people. Um, that's the role of government is to, you know, to how do we respond to our most vulnerable individuals. Um, and so I appreciate CSA doing the work. Um, Beth Arm will support CSA in any way that we can. Um, and we were both in terms of sort of volunteering and donations as well as, as advocacy um, in any ways. Can you, um, you know, on that thread, I know that there are lots of people who are sheltering in place and are healthy and want to help. Um, mm -hmm. We care about and appreciate what you said earlier. Reach out to your neighbor um, to, you know, make sure that they're okay. Um, is there a way that CSA is, how can we be helpful for CSA as individuals and as a community at this time? Well, right now, I will tell you, people are reaching out to us to volunteer, and we're trying really hard to make sure that we're protecting anyone who's volunteering for us. So, And we don't have a whole bunch of masks, and if we did, we'd be giving them over to the hospital or whatever. But uh, we do have some masks so that anyone who's like in face-to-face -face contact with a client will be masked. But uh, we have a very limited supply of masks. In fact, we, we count each one going out every day. Uh, and uh, on that note, uh, uh, it's, uh, uh, it, it is important for us that uh, volunteers know and understand that we do not want to put them in harm's way, but people can call us to volunteer. Uh, people can uh, get involved in their, uh, 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 in their local faith community. I know different faith communities. We had a wonderful success story this last weekend where over 100 meals were delivered to people living in RVs on both Saturday and Sunday. And on Saturday, it was uh, Hope's Corner, which is a Saturday morning breakfast program that was started by the Methodists, but now they'll take any, anyone. It doesn't matter if you're a Methodist or not. Uh, and uh, uh, they, they do a great job of, 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 uh, of, of working with folks. And I have to tell you, I was very proud when they stepped up to the plate and said, we can do 100 meals on Saturday. Uh, and then on Sunday, the Seventh-day Adventist Church, which does a Sunday morning breakfast program at their church, they stood up and said, well, okay, we'll provide 100 meals on Sunday. So uh, I think that, you know, faith communities uh, coming together uh, uh, and doing things like that, that just on their own. Uh, I think that uh, uh, there are uh, ways that uh, you can get creative. For example, we're looking at ways of possibly taking uh, people who are furloughed from uh, city employees who are furloughed in the city of uh, Los Altos uh, and possibly putting them to work because right now we could use a receptionist with our phone ringing off the hook. And, uh, uh, you know, so uh, we're getting creative about stuff. I would tell people, though, because there is such an outpouring of concern uh, that if you don't get placed in a volunteer position immediately, it's because we're being very careful about how we're doing things with volunteers. So uh, uh, Ladrea, who's in our office, our volunteer coordinator, she'll work with you and try and get you into a slot. Uh, but we're not gonna just have everyone come down uh, to the agency and, and volunteer, just because right now we are in shelter in place and right now everybody's boss, Dr. Sarah Cody down at the public health department uh, is telling us that uh, we have to be very, very careful and quite frankly, uh, I, I, I feel like she's the boss of us all right now. Uh, but I, I can tell you this, even when the, some of the more restrictive things start coming off and we still have social distancing, but we no longer have to shelter in place, we will start bringing in volunteers on a very big way. Yes. Uh, and and uh, that's, so if, if nothing else, get your name on the list because you will be called. Well, so Beth Arm can certainly help. We'll be happy to provide meals. Um, we'd be happy to work with the Seventh-day Adventist Church or the LAUMC or whatever the organizations are. We can commit to that without a doubt, um, be it Saturday or Sunday or... Um, That's or, fantastic. Uh, yeah. I, and I will tell you, Leslie Carmichael is on this line and she's listening to this and she's the one that is the boss lady over at Hope's Corner. So she's probably going to be calling you in a moment. <laughs> yeah. The other thing I wanted to say is I really appreciate what you're saying about, I think sometimes in emergencies, it's a real instinct for us to, you know, respond right away. And obviously mm -hmm. that's valuable and essential, but to know that CSA is in this for the long haul, 
um, and certainly other partners that Beth Am is partnered with, Life Move, Sunnyvale Community Services, Home and Hope, Ecumenical Hunger Program, um, Second Harvest, all of the Beth Am partners through this, um, Puente de la Costa Sur, like all of these amazing organizations that um, are struggling um, you know, as much as possible. We'll activate our SEDEC, our justice um, section for this to make sure that we can respond. Um, the other thing that really struck me about what you said is that we also know, and you know better than anyone here, that when people are forced to leave Mountain View or leave Los Altos, they don't move back um, no. to Mountain View or Los Altos. Once you've left, no. you don't come back. And so how important that rental assistance is and the housing is um, and the compassionate care um, that you, we are working with to recognize that this is more than just a response. This is the fabric of our community that we're responding to. Um, Absolutely. Absolutely. So, is, so part of this is the question of like, who do we want to be as a community? Um, one other question that I'm going to go, we'll open it up. Um, have you, um, we're, we see a lot of concerns about undocumented folks and I know CSA will never ask for, um, it's will never no. ask for immigration status and none of those other organizations will as well and certainly we work with the mountain view day workers center um but certainly the vulnerable people and then on top of vulnerable people um have you heard any stories or or either anecdotal or by research on sort of that community uh yeah absolutely because that community can access us just as easily as any other community and and I have been very, very vehement about it when, when that, whenever there's someone says, oh, uh, does CSA check document, uh, documented status uh, or immigrant status and so forth? And I used to say it in terms of, oh, well, we're not immigration officials, so it would be completely uh, silly for us to do that. Our job is to provide services and so forth. But now I have to get really adamant about it, especially in this day and age with, uh, with uh, folks uh, uh, really fearful and suffering is see us and I and I am very strong in this we are about providing service we are about doing the good work and I'll, I, uh, I, I I was about to use a bad word and I can't but uh, I, I, I will I will uh, never ever lead an organization that would ever even think about asking someone's immigration status before we provided them humanitarian service that is one of those things uh, uh, that is one of those things that I think is absolutely um, pivotal. I'll be let out of the building uh, by law enforcement in handcuffs before I start, before I lead an organization that, that asks anyone's immigration status. Yeah. Sorry, I, I don't mean to get so uh, forceful there. No, uh, I like it. Tom, I like it when you get forceful. No one has ever used a bad word in front of their rabbi before. <laughs> is, that would have been totally shocking for me. So I, I don't know if I would have been able to handle that. So especially this rabbi. So, you know. Yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, so a good question on this list. Um, have you been in touch with any of the... Um, tech companies. I hear there's some tech companies in Mountain View and Los Altos. Um, <laughs> do you know anything about, um, you know, be it Google or um, any of the other um, companies? I'm, have you been in touch with any of them? Yes. Uh, and I, I will tell you, my job as the executive director, my staff do an amazing job in providing the services. And, and I, I get out there and I look at, and you know, like for the first day we tried new things, I went out and actually helped do the services and so forth. Uh, but I feel like my job is to get on the phone and start uh, getting commitments of help and service, uh, whether it's uh, uh, from tech companies or whatever. And I have gotten some very important commitments uh, from. Uh, uh, tech companies uh, and others uh, in the area to help out with this cause. I, I think that one of the things that I've said is, of course, there will be money because organizations like CSA, we are going to take a financial hit on this. This is why we have our reserves. This is why when people ask, why do you have reserves? This is why we have reserves, and we're going to take a financial hit on this. That said, we are also going to make sure that uh, our neighbors who have the means to do it can help us out on this. And, and, and we've gotten some commitments there from them. Uh, most of them have actually, and I think this is actually great, most of them have asked to uh, keep that all very confidential right now because they don't want to look like they are uh, taking advantage of this crisis to make themselves look good. And I appreciate that. So I'm not going to mention any names, but there have been people who have, have made commitments to CSA 
but also not just commitments of finances, but commitments of uh, non-tangible things like volunteer groups and things like that. They're not allowed to volunteer right now, uh, but uh, uh, they, uh, they, they do, uh, uh, they do want to uh, do this eventually when the time is right. Yeah. Uh, Tom, there's another question that somebody sent me um, personally. Um, if you know somebody who you think is on the margins, right, potentially mm -hmm. it's not somebody that has been a CSA client before, um, maybe it's somebody, and this is my own speculation, that that was just the question. Potentially it's a senior person or somebody who's worried about loss of income through a job. Um, do you have thoughts or responses to that on a specific level? Yes, I, I, not on a real specific level right now, but I think we need to be aware of that. Just as we're starting to see new people show up in our food line who had never accessed services at CSA before, thank God they knew we were here. Thank God the word had been spread that they knew, knew we were here. Uh, but I think we're gonna continue to see that. And in fact, I was uh, uh, talking with someone the other day and I said, I think, people who are low income, and we're speaking specifically about seniors, and that population is so vulnerable, and this points that out more than anything, uh, just how vulnerable seniors are. Uh, but uh, I think that the low income seniors, they kind of know uh, we're here for the most part. We've gotten the word out. The, uh, the senior housing projects all know about us. The senior centers all know about us and that kind of thing. Where I think we're going to find, though, and then you've got the group of seniors who can take care of themselves, uh, you know, who have the finances and the means and so forth. I think we're going to start to see a group, this is just my thought, uh, I think we're going to start to see a group of seniors who have been just barely making it, and this is going to kind of put them over the edge. Uh, and so that's the group I'm worried about. And so I think we're gonna have to, as an organization, and, and the community can really be helpful to us, is to keep an eye on your neighbors, especially your senior, senior neighbors. But I think the other way the community can be helpful to us is helping to get the word out through senior centers, uh, through uh, faith communities, whether, uh, whether it's Beth Am or other faith communities, that, uh, that we're out there and we can help. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks for that. I mean, certainly that's something that Beth Am cares about a lot about. Um, we know that we have many seniors in our population. Um, we want to respond to them in every facet that we can, um, both in terms of a personally, in terms of um, communal support to bridge the idea of social isolation, but also we know that there will be people that are really in need and we want to make sure that those people can get all the services they want to. So um, we're trying to reach out to everybody at Beth Am. We're trying to connect with everyone. Um, if you hear of anyone, please let me or one of the other rabbis know um, on an individual level. And if it's not a person at Beth Am, we want to work with them too. Um, right. The only thing I would say about what Tom does and what CSA, one of the reasons I've loved working with CSA the last four years is that we really promote dignity. Um, there's a real, um, it's a real Jewish value, and obviously CSA isn't a Jewish organization, but we'll adopt you if need be. Um, exactly, thank is, you. There is a standard of dignity um, that comes into care, um, and that how we respond to individuals, especially that are on the margins, um, how we hold that up is, is something that we um, we really care about. There's, I have another question here, a private question, um, with concern about the CSA staff. Um, certainly, you don't get you, we know that people don't work at CSA for the money. Um, and so how are your staff doing? And is there anything that we can do to support um, your staff? Um, thank you for that question. Um, I was talking with uh, uh, my counterpart over at Sunnyvale Community Services uh, about how our staffs are, 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 are uh, dealing with this. And she was in agreement when I made the statement, some are scared some are heroes, all are anxious. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, that's, that I think is so true of, of us. Uh, uh, when we got the word that the lockdown was going to start happening, and, it, and we also got the word at the same time that we were an essential service, so please stay open, uh, that's, that's when we knew that uh, not only is this place special, but it's a place that can be a lifesaver. Uh, and so, uh, uh, yeah, CSA is designated as, a, as an essential service and an essential service in the northern part of Santa Clara County. The staff, I think, are taking it very, very well. Some uh, are, uh, I think, taking it better than others. 
uh, and uh, uh, thank God no one has gotten sick yet. Uh, we actually did something, and I did something that was very controversial and I think made me very unpopular for a while, but I'm so glad I did it. At the very beginning, even before Dr. Cody declared the crisis, I closed the CSA lobby. I said the only people in the CSA building uh, are CSA paid employees, and uh, we do social distancing. And uh, uh, there were a lot, I got a little bit of pushback on that, that, you know, we're such a warm and welcoming place. How can you lock the lobby door? And I said, because you got to protect the mothership. We, if any of us start going down, if CSA had to close, that would be a major, major tragedy. Uh, and so, uh, uh, and I say that as the people are lined up for the showers outside, as people are lined up for the food outside, uh, that would be horrible. So that's why I, I did that. I've been a real hard nose about that. Uh, and I think the staff have come to appreciate that because we are all healthy. No one has gotten sick uh, uh, among our staff. Uh, we've also been uh, taking real precautions. If anyone was at a high risk, like an uh, older age group or uh, had underlying health conditions, they were either reassigned or sent home. Uh, and we uh, took the impetus upon ourselves uh, that anyone who was sent home that did not have the ability to work at home uh, as an organization, and I wish more employers would do this, we automatically granted two extra weeks of sick leave. So no one would have to take a pay cut because the last thing we want is for anyone to not get paid uh, during this time. Uh, so uh, I would say the staff's spirits are good. Uh, I try my best to make sure everyone knows that you know we're all in this together. Uh, and I think that, uh, uh, like I said, some are scared, some are heroes, but we're all anxious. But we're all we're all meeting the challenge. And I, I'm very I'm very very proud of my staff. Yeah, I think they all, I mean, the staff that have been working on this, I think, you know, we know that the staff do so much, so con all the time, um, interacting with people, responding to things that are well beyond, they're overworked, um, they're tired, and they also have their own home lives, yeah. right? their own families and their own grandparents and their own neighbors um, that they have to can be concerned about their own children. Um, and so how, you know, one of the CSA um one of the head people at um, at CSA um, just had a baby, um, mm -hmm. so, you know, thinking about individuals, you know, caring for a newborn, but also caring for your clients, um, how we do that um, in that sense. Um, I see Charlie Rothschild on here. I know Charlie's been very close with some of the people, with Marie at Sunnyvale Community Services, um, mm -hmm. from some of the community organizing work that we're doing. Um, so I appreciate that all of the support um, yeah. Just one question, just that everyone just saw. And if we don't want to volunteer in person, is there anything else we can do? For for whatever reason, we feel like we're homebound, um, or um, we have compromised people that might be living with us, and it's not worth the risk. Um, is there anything else that we could be able to do? Uh, right now, stand by because I think a lot of that stuff is going to get formulated over the next uh, coming weeks. Uh, I think donations, of course, obviously, donations are, are uh, welcome and needed. Uh, but uh, uh, I think that one of the, one of the best things you can do uh, right now is, is stay tuned and keep in touch with us. Because uh, I will tell you that uh, uh, it is um, uh, uh, an evolving thing. We're reinventing things almost every day we come in. Uh, whether it's reinventing a program, reinventing a service. Right now, we're completely reinventing the way rental assistance is done uh, to make sure that people who are renting an RV are still eligible for rental assistance. Um, uh, so that, that uh, 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 one of the things that, that we could do. I saw someone just put up about sewing masks. Uh, if you have the ability to sew uh, masks, we, in, in a couple of weeks, we may be in, in need of masks in a big way. Uh, right now, we think we have masks for 20 distributions, 20 food distributions, uh, which means we're gonna blow through those pretty quickly. But right now, I think the people who need masks more than anything are the medical providers. Yeah, uh, just yeah. two comments I only said. One on that last one, yes. Um, Bethom is part of a community collection. Um, we sent out um, 
a last on that. Um, we, we sent out an email blast yesterday that there are, uh, we've heard from a lot of doctors and hospitals that if you have a mask or any extra medical supplies lying around, um, there's, you can get in touch with me or there's forms that you can fill up and people will fill them out specifically, um, whether it's Stanford Hospital or some of the Kaiser hospitals or other hospitals that I'm not even sure of. Um, so for people requesting those. And then the second part, um, and Tom, this is to, um, or actually to your first part of what you said, um, I think that sometimes there's an urge um, and there's a feeling of wanting to be a part of something and wanting to contribute. And it's very hard to be at home and not to be able to do that. Um, you know, yeah. Judaism teaches a lot about sort of how do we respond to the idea of fulfilling mitzvahs, of fulfilling commandments. Um, yeah. and certainly, um, there, there is no reason that you, I understand the, the feeling, um, but you should not rush out there to try and help if you're not in the right position. Um, Absolutely. You should be able to stay, you know, stay behind and the care that you're giving and just by, you know, signing into calls like this, reaching out to your friends and neighbors over text message, over calling, handwritten notes. Um, this is all part of a community response. Um, and so it's very hard. This is a very personal thing for me, as many of you know. Um, I'm the type of person that would be volunteering right away. But with somebody with a pregnant wife, that is not something that we feel comfortable doing at this time. Um, so it's hard for me. Listen, it's hard for me to be cooped up with my two little boys just in general. But that's all. The, that's a whole other conversation. Um, <laughs> but to be able to, how do we respond to those um, as well? So we have actually, a, yeah, actually, yeah. A, a quick note on that, and I think that's so important <laughs> is knowing what the limitations are and knowing what you can and can't do. And I've mentioned a couple of different times to people that you know one of the reasons. Uh, uh, one of the reasons why I went into this as a line of work, uh, as a profession, and like you said, I didn't do this to get money. <laughs> I'd have been something completely different if I wanted to make money. But uh, one of the reasons why I, I do this, did this as a profession is because I feel like in my own personal life, I have this need to serve. Uh, there's this real need to serve. And I've said to a couple of people, we gotta be very careful that people don't let their need to be of service, uh, put them in positions that are compromised or put them in positions that are not healthy for themselves or for the people they're serving. Uh, and that's why, uh, uh, it, it, that's why it's so incredibly important uh, for us to be very careful and very cautious about who we are actually putting out there doing the food distribution right now. Who is actually in charge of making sure there's social distancing over by the showers right now? Uh, and making sure that, like for instance, the showers that come on site here, those are, are, are staffed by trained professional staff uh, who know how to handle laundry, who know how to handle towels and things like that. Because otherwise that could be really, really uh, 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 a very difficult thing for us to deal with if we were the cause of spreading something like this. That would be tragic if in our, in our need to do good works, in our will, willingness to do good works, we ended up somehow making things worse. Yeah, and I just do want to reiterate, there is ways that people can help that might not be the traditional ways of working in the food camp pantry um, or um, handing out meals. Um, but listen, those calls and those phone calls and those handwritten notes, um, supporting local small businesses, many of the CSA clients work at local restaurants that are really mm -hmm. in jeopardy, um, you know, buying gift cards for individuals. Um, Michaela, Michaela Hellman Tincher, a big fan of CSA and of Beth Am, told me the other day that she started to, to donate meals from local restaurants. Um, there are some forms where you can purchase um, meals to be sent um, to homeless individuals and homeless shelters um, from, or, and to doctors and nurses from local restaurants. Um, so there are ways to do things um, at home. Um, we'll try and populate those in the um, Beth Am Sedic updates that we continue we, that we continue to send out. Um, we have about 10 more minutes um, and I wanted to um, open up um, for other questions. If you can put your little hand icon up and I can see you and then I can unmute you so you can ask questions to Tom um, or myself. So. Well, I don't see the little, oh, here we go. Okay, Richard, go ahead. Yeah, this is the very, just a quick one. 
Harbor Freight Tools on Sunday announced a program to donate all their N95 masks. Oh, you wow. just need to go online and submit an application. Harbor Freight Tools masks donations. It'll take you to a link that'll allow you to apply for a large, any number of masks that you want. They have a large number that they're donating to the community. Great. Thank and this you. is for everybody on the call. If you need masks, go there. Harbor Freight Tools, thank you very much. Tom, is there a minimum age you need to be to volunteer? Right now we're saying 18. Usually we allow teenagers to volunteer uh, and uh, uh, children down to a certain age with their parents. But right now we're putting strict uh, guidelines of 18 years of age, you need to be an adult to volunteer at CSA because of the crisis. Uh, mm -hmm. And yeah. Tom, I see this one. When I went online to CSA to volunteer, it says to fill in a bunch of forms and get tested. I assume you just want names of people as backups for now. Is that right? Yeah, I don't know anything about getting tested. Uh, that would not be something we would ask people to do. Maybe it's a so, heap of test. You have to take a heap of <laughs> test. So, yeah. So, okay, but you know what? Call our volunteer coordinator, Ladrea uh, Clark. Uh, and she can uh, and go on, on the website, on the Community Services Agency website, and make sure you're on the right website, because our website address is CSA Cares, all one word, CSA Cares.org. CSA Cares.org. Yeah, and if you have any questions um, or how, how to con contact CSA, you can always reach out to me. Um, all of the information is on the hunger and homelessness. Um, part of our web page um, as well. Um, so we have a strong working relationship with CSA and we can connect you with anyone. As you say that, I just want everyone to know, and I know this from personal experience, um, you know, these volunteer coordinators, whether it's Second Harvest or CSA or EHP, um, are figuring everything else as we go along, as are the rap oh, program teams. Yeah. So, um, you know, I have been inundated with emails in a way that I've never thought I was going to. Um, and so just trying to keep my head above water, dealing with families as well. Um, so be compassionate um, with everybody um, as you reach out. I do see another hand up. Dar none. I don't know who that is, but um, you can ask. I'm going to unmute you. Go ahead. Okay. Hi, this is uh, Dave Arnone from Move Mountain View. Hey, Dave. Hello. So... Uh, I and a couple passionate volunteers uh, have been working to organize uh, food distributions and meal distributions into the RV communities. Yes. Did you hear me give you a shout out earlier in the call? I heard that. So yes. thank you. And Absolutely. Thanks, and thanks to Hope's Corner and the Seventh-day Adventist churches. Um, so what we've been up to is coordinating deliveries of meals for uh, provided by the school district during the week uh, into the communities. And that, um, that delivery is currently at 50 meals. And then on the weekends, um, you know, we've organized the 100 a day meals, but we are continuing to look for uh, more help and participants. Um, and that help would come in two forms. Um, one would simply be, you know, signing up to deliver uh, you know, a meal every, you know, 50 meals every Wednesday, for instance, that we could deliver into those communities. And the other thing that we are trying to do is to put together a solid grocery supply to uh, bring food into some of the established uh, cooking places so that, me that hot meals can be uh, prepared as well in kind of a more regular way. So if anybody has you know, access to, you know, kind of regular grocery supply or wants to provide meals, um, please be in contact with me and I will uh, yeah. put my contact information into the chat. Yeah, so Bethan will be also has been working with other partners around this, not just in Mountain View, um, but as well. And if you can always be in touch with me um, around some of this idea. Thanks for all your hard work. Um, so many people here. I see some um, physicians on the line as we talk. I see some nurses. I see some of the people from the Bethan, um, um, you know, caring committees that are doing so much work um, with individuals. So certainly there's opportunities to volunteer. If you have ideas, please reach out to us.
um, or an, I can help direct to CSA, or you can reach out to Ladrea, csacares.org. We'll make sure um, we add that to there um, or some of the other partnerships um, um, through there. I see a couple other people from the CSA board here as well. We have a couple more minutes. Um, so yeah, I had one more point to make. This is Dick Roy again. Tom, did you get my email of Sunday giving you a link to the map that was created for lunch donations for schools in this area? The map was created by Stanford students. Yes, I did see that. And I haven't had a chance to dig into it yet, but I think that's fantastic that the Stanford kids did, I shouldn't say kids, the Stanford young adults, the Stanford students did that. I think that's fantastic. And, and faculty, but I, I'm gonna take no offense. To Hope Corner's not on it, CSA is not on it. Yeah. None of the organizations in the Mountain View area are on it. So you should take, you should be proactive and get CSA on that map. Okay, I'll take a look at that. Thank yeah. you, Dick. All and right, lastly, well, you, you should do the same for Hope's Corner. Okay, we're gonna try and keep people uh, moving here with real questions. <laughs> um, if you have thoughts or comments, this is our opportunity. We only have another second. So um, if not, we'll give Tom a final word. Um, before we say thanks to everyone. Okay. Oh. I'd just like to say hello, Good. Tom. Oh my goodness. There's a face from my past. How yes. are you? <laughs> I'm fine, and my sister's calling, so I better mute myself. But okay. I hope well, you have talked. Anyway, it's wonderful what you're doing, and I'm so pleased to, see, to run into you again and see you doing this fabulous work. Well, thank you. It's great to see you too. Thanks. That's great. All right, Tom. I'm going right. to end us. I'm going to end our conversation here for a second, um, just by on behalf of Beth Am and everyone on the call um, to thank you so much for all the work that you do. Listen, we start. Um, you know, I don't know if you if you um, certainly the work that you do is sacred, right? And certainly yes. um, the way that you lift up your hands and lift up your hands of the staff um, is through caring and holy work um so you know certainly to take an opportunity to offer you um and please convey it to your staff like a form like an informal blessing um absolutely blessed are you tom blessed are you csa blessed are you all the providers in these most vulnerable times that care about the individuals on the margins um that care about the most vulnerable in our community may the work of your hands be lifted up may your souls be nourished um may you go from strength to strength and may you always be blessed with the work that you do i'm going to unmute everybody and we're all going to say amen yeah, together. Right back. Amen. 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 Amen.